we go to our whiteboard. So last time I'm trying to get the whiteboard. Yeah. Uh, last time we performed the one main Z test. So I want to use, uh, we need to continue from there. We performed the one main Z test and we found that uh, our Z observed was 2.8508 and Z critical was 2.33. And so when we compared these two, we found that our decision ought to be rejecting H0. And so we said that the test results were statistically significant at 1% level. And so our conclusion was that the mean price of the books had actually increased. Now, this approach, which last time, this approach is known as the critical value approach. Critical value approach. Because uh, in this approach, we look for uh, Z critical. Okay, my, my mouse is not responding. Now the screen is blank. Okay, now I'm, I'm back. So uh, this approach that we used is known as the critical value approach looked for red critical found that it was 2.33 we have another approach which is referred to as the p value approach it is referred to as the p value approach and so what is this p-value approach all about what is it all about uh, first of all uh, we can just describe uh, actually p-value is just probability value that is what it represents p-value simply represents probability value. And if it is probability value, so what is it exactly? Uh, uh, let me What is it exactly? Now, this Z observed, which we calculated last time, we found to be 2.8508 is instrumental in obtaining the p-value z observed let me share a slide to explain what i mean uh, i give it a second so that everybody can see the slide now in the slide that 
presenting. We have the normal curve. Uh, if it's the normal or the T, what, uh, no, this one is the normal because I have Z observed, Z observed positive and negative. And obviously now we know that it, 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 it's a normal curve for a two-tailed test. How do we know that? Because there are two small shaded regions on the extreme left and the extreme right. Now you can see Z observed here on the right side and you can see negative Z observed on the left side. We have positive Z observed and negative Z observed because this is a two-tailed test. And this Z observed, it is that Z observed which we have calculated. That is this 2.8508. So once we calculate Z observed, And for two-tailed test, Z observed and negative observed, then the area to the left of the Z observed and the area, uh, sorry, the considering positive Z observed, the area to the right of Z observed and the area to the left of negative Z observed combined form the probability value. So that is the P value. For a two tailed test, then the P value is made up of the addition of the two small extreme areas. Let me go to the, uh, add, okay. I don't know whether maybe you are still uh, trying to note that down. If I am fast, you just let let me know so that I slow down. Now, this is for a two-tailed test. There is an area to the right of positive Z observed. There is an area to the left of negative Z observed. We add them, it gives us the P value. What happens if we are considering a left-tailed test. If we are considering a left-tailed test, then the rejection region is to the left. And so suppose uh, we got a particular Z-observed value, the shaded region, is the one which is now the p value. So for a left tailed test, we have to calculate negative z observed, and then we read from the normal tables the magnitude of the area to the left of negative z observed. The size of that area is the one which is the probability value. So this is what we have when we have a left tailed test. And what happens if we have a right tailed test? If we have a right tailed test, then the rejection region obviously is to the right. And so we end up when we uh, after our calculations, we get positive Z observed. The, uh, so the area to the right of positive Z observed is the one which gives us the p-value. What this means is that once we know the Z observed, it means we need to go to the tables and we identify this probability value. And after identifying the probability value, then we need to decide whether we reject H0 or we fail to reject H0. So now, uh, with that explanation of the p-value, 
then you can that if the p value if the p value is less than is less than the level of significance if the p value is less than the level of sig significance then reject h naught then reject h naught so if the p value is less than the level of significance we ought to reject h naught now let us uh, see an application of this by considering uh, this example that we did for one mean z test so from this one mean z test we found that the z observed was 2.8508 so the example is this from the previous example obtain and interpret this is the example from the previous example obtain and interpret the p value the p value of the hypothesis test obtain and interpret the p value of the hypothesis test so we need to do this so So, from the previous example, Z observed, uh, looking at our usual normal distribution, Z observed was positive. So, Z observed is equal to 2.8508. Uh, so we need to determine the small area to the right and for us to determine that we need to go to the tables and we need to look for what is represented by a z score value of 2.8508 so i need to open my normal I need to open my normal. Okay, there it is. I'm opening it. It's opening. Let me share my screen. My screen is presenting. So I said that uh, we need to get the small area to the right whose z score value is 2.8508. 2.8. So because this is a uh, the z score values are only given in three figures then we, we just need to consider 
2.85. So I can see 2.8 here, 0 0.997, 0 0.997. The first one is under zero. One, two, three, four, five. So the area represented by a Z score value of 2.85. Five, sorry, 2.85 is 0 0.997. 0 0.997. So from minus infinity up to the Z score value of 2.85, that area from minus up to this is actually 0.997. So obviously our p value is none other than 1 minus 0.997 and that is just 0 0.003. So as we said earlier, if the p-value is less than the level of significance, then we reject H0. So now, in the previous question, the level of significance was uh, 1%, 1%, which is actually 0 0.01. Alpha was equal to 0 0.01. So obviously, we can see that 0 0.003 is less than 0 0.01. And because of that, then we reject H0. We reject H0, which implies that the test results are statistically significant at 1% level. Uh, and therefore, we make our conclusion as we had made before. So occasionally you may be asked to use the critical value approach to, to perform a particular test, or you can be asked to use the p-value approach. So you should be conversant. We want to perform what we call the one mean one mean t test one mean sorry one mean t test one mean t test so which kind of a test is this this is the test for one population mean when sigma is unknown. Whenever we see the the t, whenever we see that we need to use the t table, we always know that uh, the population standard deviation is not given, and so we need to calculate uh, from by using we need to calculate the sample standard deviation because the population variance or population standard deviation is not given so for the one mean t test our test statistic equal to x bar minus mu x bar minus mu over s over square root of n so we will calculate S and remember that this uh, T statistic is T distributed. It is T distributed N minus one degrees of freedom. So when we go to the tables, we know the degrees of freedom to start searching under. So let's look at an example and see how we can do this. 
the average consumer the average consumer unit spent on services spent on services dollars 1749 1749 last year last year 25 consumer units last year 25 consumer units had the expenditures on services had the expenditures on services in dollars as shown in data set 9 as shown in data set 9 let me get my data sets so that we are talking the same language. Set nine. I'm still looking for it. I have so many documents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it. Okay. Somebody wants me to repeat the question. The question is the average consumer unit, the average consumer unit spent on services, spent on services is dollars seventeen forty nine. Last year, twenty five consumer units 25 consumer units had the expenditures had the expenditures on services in dollars in dollars as shown in data set 9 and there's another comment still let me read it too Oh, it's the same, same one. OK, so I've already repeated. So now I was just displaying my data set nine. So what is in data set nine? We have these items, 1292, 2236 up to 1725. Data set nine, how many are they? One, two, three, four, five, five, five. So the question is this. At alpha equals 0 0.05, at alpha equals 0 0.05, perform a one mean t test. Perform a one mean t test to determine whether, to determine whether last year's mean, to determine whether last year's mean differed from the mean of differed from the mean of dollars 1749 so we need to somebody cannot see the screen why okay yeah, yeah. Now I'm sharing my screen. OK, I have. Uh, so I, I was saying. I'll just repeat the question again at alpha equals 0 0.05 perform a one mean t test to determine whether last year's mean differed from the mean of dollars 1749. OK, good. Now I can see. Now I, I know all of us are seeing the screen. So the first thing that we need to do is to 
state alternative. You need to state the null and the alternate alternative. The null is that the mean is equal to seventeen four nine dollars. And for the alternative, we need to read the question again to understand better. We look for the keyword. Now, if the question is, perform a one mean t test to determine whether last year's mean differed. The keyword is differed. If it differed, it means it's not equal to 1749. So we know that we shall perform a two-tailed test. We shall perform a two-tailed test and we shall be we shall use the t-table, which also looks like the normal, looks like the standard normal. The only difference are the degrees of freedom. So of course we need to substitute in equation one for us to get our t observed then using critical value approach we will also get z critical so first in order for us to substitute in equation one then we need to get x bar and now i know that you're you are uh, you are what you are experts of calculating sample mean as per the data that we have, then X bar is 1935, 1935.76, 1935.76. And then we need to calculate S, of course, which is obtained uh, using that formula for sample variance, some of those uh, uh, subtopics we discussed in the very beginning, and we know that after computations, we will find that S is 350.9. And so now we can calculate our T observed. We can calculate our t observed by substituting in the equation. So we shall have 1935.76 minus mu minus 1749.76. divided by S, that is 350.9 over square root of N. Of course, square root of N is square root of 25, which is five. And this will give us a value of 2.661. It gives us that value. And so now we need to get T critical. Now we need to get T critical. So T critical. Uh, uh, this is a two-tailed test. It's a two-tailed test at uh, five pass at alpha equals 0 0.05. So, uh, so this is uh, T0 0.025. How do I get point zero? Because this is a two-tailed test. Now I'm writing at the top right on the on the diagram I do I drew for the t table. So 
the small area to the right is point zero two five. The small area to the left is also point zero two five. Such that if we add the two, then we get point zero five. So we are dividing point zero five by two because this is a two-tailed test. Why is it a two-tailed test? Because the question the question talked about deferred, deferred. Deferred means not equal to. Okay, so T critical is T0.025. How many degrees of freedom? Our sample is size 25. So the degrees of freedom are 24. So now we know what to go and look for in the T tables. We know what to look for in the T table. And I also want to open mine. I want to open mine, my T table. My T table. I share my screen. T distribution table. Uh, we said that we are looking for T 0 0.025 with 24 degrees of freedom. So first I look for 24. Let me minimize a little bit. Yeah, 24 from the left. And I see 1.318, then 1.711. OK, so above 2.064, I can see T0.025. So the value we are looking for is 2.064, 2.064. Six, four. So it means that uh, in the diagram which I drew at the top right, on the right, the critical value is 2.064 and the critical value towards the left The critical value towards the left is minus 2.064. So we compare, now we need to compare the T observed, which is 2.6, sorry, I want to make that clear. 2.661, that is our T uh, observed and we are comparing it to 2.064 and negative 2.064. We want to identify where 2.661 falls. Obviously, 2.661 is to the right of 2.064, and so and uh, where it falls is actually the rejection region. So because of that, then we say that we reject H0, we reject H0. What does that imply? That the test results are statistically significant at alpha equals 0.05. And so, what is the conclusion? And so, if we have rejected H0, we have rejected H0, then the conclusion is that the mean, last year's mean, or rather, last year's mean 
differed, differed, differed from the national mean of seventeen forty-nine dollars. Last year's mean differed from the mean of seventeen forty-nine dollars. So that is the critical value approach. Now we want to look at how to answer the same same question, but now we use the p-value approach. So we want to use the p-value approach. So uh, again, we just start off from t observed. Our T observed is 2.661. 2.661. So uh, what, what do I really mean? Our P value. Uh, uh, not a P value. Our T observed is Two point six six one. So here it is two point six six one. And because it is a two tailed test, then there is another T observed, which also has a value of minus two point six six one. So our p-value will be made up of the sum of the small area to the left added to the small area to the right. When we add those two, it gives us the p-value for this question. So, you know, we need to go to the tables and try to identify the, the this particular p value okay let's go to our tables remember uh, the degrees of freedom which are 24 24 so i'm pointing at 24 from the left and our t observed was 2.661. So we need to look for the position of 2.661. Where does 2.661 lie? So first I see 1.3, then 1.7, 2.06, 2.49, then 2.7. Obviously, uh, 2.661 lies between 2.492 and 2.797. Let me write that on the whiteboard. 2.661 lies between 2.492 and 2.797. 2.6 is uh, greater than 2.492 and it is less than it is less than 2.797 so we need to look for uh, the probabilities at 2.492 and the probabilities and the other probability at 2.797. So I go back to the table. Above 2.492, I can see 0 0.01. 0 0.01. Zero, 1. And remember now, this is probability. 
What about above 2.797? 2.797, I see 0 0.005. 0 0.005. Five. So, 2.661, the probability for 2.661 should be greater than 0 0.005, but it should be less than 0 0.01, the p-value. It should be greater than 0 0.005, but it should be less than 0 0.01. And remember that this is a two-tailed test. It is a two-tailed test. So we need to multiply 0 0.01 by two because this is a two-tailed test and we also need to multiply 0 0.05 by two because this is a two-tailed test. So what are we saying? We are saying that the p-value lies, the p-value is greater than uh, what is 0 0.005 times 2? That is 0 0.01, 0 0.01, and it is less than uh, 0 0.01 times 2 is 0 0.02. Now, let me write, rewrite that. We usually p less than something. It makes sense to the brain. P less than 0 0.02 and greater than 0 0.01. So this is our P value. Now we need to compare the P value with the level of significance. What was our level of significance? The level of significance was 0 0.05. Alpha was given as 0 0.05. Now, if we look at the p-value, the p-value must be greater than 0 0.01, but it should be less than 0 0.02. Of course, 0 0.02 is less than 0 0.05 and we say that if the p value is less than alpha then we should reject h naught so we need to reject h naught the test results are statistically significant and therefore last year's mean differed from 1749 dollars and therefore last year's mean differed from 1749 dollars now uh, we continue we continue we continue to the next example to the next example Okay, so I need another whiteboard. So in our next example, 
اه In the next example, we want to perform inference inference for two population means inference for two population means we want to perform inference when we when we test hypothesis we are actually performing inference so we want to perform inference for two population means obviously uh mu one and mu two and uh, we shall consider three different cases we shall consider three different cases so for the first case we consider the case where the variances are assumed to be equal variances assumed to be equal variances assumed to be equal and uh, when we usually perform this test we refer to it as the pooled t test it is also referred to as the pooled t test Okay. So we just want to perform a hypothesis test to compare two population means. We want to perform a hypothesis test to compare two population means. Which ones? Mu1 and Mu2. Mu1 and mu2 remember uh, the criterion that we had for checking equal population variances we had discussed this and we said that if the larger standard deviation over the smaller standard deviation is less than two, then we had agreed that it implies that the two populations have equal variances. And uh, also remember, if the two populations have equal variances, we had talked about the pooled sample variance we had talked about the pooled sample variance and uh, uh, we said that the pooled sample variance is given by n1 minus 1 s1 squared plus N2 minus 1 S2 squared over the degrees of freedom N1 plus N2 minus two degrees of freedom. So the pooled T test, the pooled T test is given by T equals X bar one minus X bar two over X bar two over pooled sample standard deviation, pooled sample standard deviation multiplied by 
the square root, sorry, multiplied by the square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 and we need to remember that this pooled t-test statistic is t-distributed with n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom. So we need to remember that. And therefore, let us look at an example so that we see how to do this. We see how to do this. Example, independent, simple, random samples. Independent, simple, random samples of 30 and 35 members of 30 and 35 members from public and private. Oh, there's a question. The means, Rashid, what are you saying? I'm not getting Rashid's question. Uh, this is a, if I can try to answer him, we, we, we just want to compare or perform a hypothesis test to compare two population means. Two population means, that is mu1 and mu2. I don't, I'm not understanding. We don't use means. Which means? Uh, Rashid's question is not very clear. So I'm just trying to repeat what I had said. This uh, pooled t-test is used to perform a hypothesis test to compare two population means. Which population means? Mu1 mu1 and mu2. So these are the two population means that we want to compare. And of course we shall compare them using sample data. And so let us uh, do an example, then we shall see how we go about it. Maybe then uh, if somebody asks a question, it can be more clearer. So the question is, or rather the example that we want to do is independent simple random samples of 30 and 35 members from public and private institutions respectively, from public and private institutions respectively yielded, yielded data set 10 yielded data set 10 where the data are in thousands of dollars are in dollars 1000 so let me show my 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 data sets Let me display my data set. Data set 10. Uh, 
I share my screen. So in data set 10, mm, sample one is drawn from public institutions and it has 30 members. Of course, the salaries are in thousands of dollars and sample two is drawn from, uh, from private institutions. Sample size 35. So the question is this, at the 5% significance level, at the 5% significance level, perform a pooled t-test, perform a pooled t-test to determine whether perform a pooled t-test to determine whether the mean salaries to determine whether the mean salaries in public and private institutions differ to determine in public institutions differ there is a keyword there which we always look for and we have seen it is the word differ it is the word differ so first and foremost we need to state our null and alternative our null hypothesis h not is such that mu one the first mean is equal to the second mean and the alternative because of the word differ then we know that the alternative is that mu one is not equal to mu two And because of the word differ, then we know that we shall conduct a two-tailed test. We shall conduct a two-tailed test. So before we go into doing that, we need to check for equality of population variances. We need to check for equality of population variances. So we need to calculate X bar one and S one. We need to calculate X bar two and S two. X bar one for the first sample, for the first sample, yeah, sample one, which is made up of 30. Sample two is made up of 35. So X bar one, sample mean is given by 64.98 and after getting x bar 1 then we can get s1 sample standard deviation for the first popular uh, for the first sample which is 23 0.95 and then we calculate x bar 2 x bar 2 which is equal to 76.59 and uh, s2 S2 equals S2 equals 26.21. So now we can easily check for equality of population variances. We take the larger standard deviation and divide by the 
smaller standard deviation that is 26.21 divided by 23.95 and what is that equal to it's equal to 1.09 of course 1.09 is less than 2 it is less than 2 which implies that we can safely assume that the population variances are equal and if that is the case then we need to calculate sp sp pooled sample standard deviation sp and using the formula which i had written for sp squared of course we kept the square root we find that sp is 25.2 25.2 now we know sp we know x bar 1 we know x bar 2 of course we know n1 and n2 then we can go ahead to calculate T observed. We can go ahead in the calculation of T observed. So we substitute for X bar 1 with uh, 64.98. What about X bar 2? We substitute for that with 76.59. And SP is 25.2 square root of 1 over 30 plus 1 over 35 and so t observed will be minus 1.852 but what are the degrees of freedom the degrees of freedom are 63 how do we get that how do we get 63 it is n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom n1 plus n2 minus 2 that is 30 plus 35 that is 65 minus 2 is 63 and i know very well that i did not give you tables which have degrees of freedom up to 63 i will send the table after this uh, so t critical i don't know let me just check whether does this table have i don't think it has 63 degrees of freedom it doesn't have so t critical you know this is a two-tailed test what was the level of significance Again, it was 5%. So we are talking about T0.025, with uh, uh, 63 degrees of freedom. And so let me open that table. I will send it after this. So it's opening up.
then I can share my screen. Uh, so we are talking about, I just enlarge a little bit. We are talking about 63 degrees of freedom. 63 degrees of freedom and uh, what is uh, alpha over 2? It's 0 0.025. 0 0.025. So I see 1.2, then 1.6. So following 63 degrees of freedom and uh, T0.025, I read there 1.998. 1.998. So this is 1.998. Uh, so it means that it means that we have two values here positive 1.998 because it is a two tailed test and uh, negative 1.998. 998. Uh, and what was our T observed? Negative 1.852. Our T observed is negative 1.852. Of course, negative 1.852 is very close to negative 1.998, but it is in the non-rejection region. Negative 1.852 falls in the non-rejection region. So what do we do? We fail to reject H0. We fail to reject H0. What does that mean? It means that the test results are not statistically significant. The test results are not statistically significant. And therefore, what was our H0? You know, we failed to reject H0. We failed to reject H0. So what is our conclusion? That the mean salaries do not differ. Our conclusion is that the mean salaries do not differ. Now, uh, mm, so what we, uh, the method we have used is uh, critical value approach that is the critical value approach so now we want to use the method of uh, p value p value approach now we want to use p value approach and for the p value approach we start off from the t observed that we have calculated the t observed that we have calculated we start off with the t value so what are we actually saying we are saying that if this is our solution Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is one point eight five two 
and there is negative 1.852 because it is a two-tailed test. So we need to check uh, where 1.852 falls in order for us to identify the probabilities involved. So we go back, we go back to our T table. Sixty three degrees of freedom. Uh, we want to identify where one point eight five two falls. There is a question. Yes. Okay, Juma is saying that he missed how we computed T observed to be minus 1.852. Yes. Okay, so let me try to explain that. Yeah, we found T observed to be minus 1.852. How did I do that? I simply substituted in uh, let me call this can i call it equation two because we had equation one this one here this is equation two so in order to get t observed as minus 1.852 i substituted in equation two i substituted in equation two. Because we had already calculated x bar one, x bar two, we calculate x bar one was 64.98 at the bottom left. What was x bar two? 76.59 at the bottom left. What was SP? SP is 25.2. How do we get SP? I substituted in what I can call equation one. Let me call it equation one. To get SP, you substitute there. And uh, what about one over N1? One of the samples is of size 30. What about one of, over N2? N2 is 35. I hope it is clear to to yeah yeah Juma has said that it's clear okay fine yeah so where were we yeah we were looking for the p value and so we were trying to identify where 1.852 falls because 1.852 is t observed Okay, so I think I had opened this table. Ah, so uh, let's try to check where 1.852 falls under 63 degrees of freedom. Moving from the left at 63, there is 1.2 something, there is 1.6 something, there is 1.9 something. Obviously, 1.852 falls between 1.669 and 1.998. Let me write that on the whiteboard. So let me write at the top right one point, oh sorry, one point eight five two falls between it falls between which numbers are those uh, it falls between let me write it down 1.852 lies between 
1.998 and 1.6699 and 1.6699 So now let's look at the probabilities above those numbers. Above 1.669, it is 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Above 1.998, what do we have? 0 0.025. Point zero to five. So the p value should be lying somewhere between those two probabilities. Of course, it will be greater than zero point zero to five, but it will be less than zero point zero five. We multiply the, each of them by two because we ha we are conducting a two-tailed test because we are conducting a two-tailed test then we shall find that our p value lies between 0 0.05 times 2 is 0 0.1 and it is greater than 0 0.025 times 2 is 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So the p-value is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. But what was the level of significance? The level of uh, significance alpha was given as 0 0.05 and we can see that the p-value is supposed to be greater than 0 0.05 so if the p-value is greater than the level of significance then we are supposed to reject no we are supposed to fail to reject h naught if the p-value is greater than the level of significance, we are supposed to fail to reject H0. So we fail to reject H0. What does that imply? That the test results are not statistically significant at 5% level. And so we make the same conclusion that there is no difference between the mean salaries in the public and private institutions. There is no uh, difference in the mean salaries. Okay. So now, You know, it's better for me to try to complete this subtopic because if you go for Christmas and then you start celebrating Christmas and I continue with the subtopic, you will have forgotten every, some of the things we shall have said. So when, you are, when we are still fresh with these significance tests, we can try to, if possible, it would have been good to complete with this subtopic. Okay, let's look at the uh, 
Now we want to perform. Anyway, if I do non pooled t test, it's fine. Okay, let's. Uh, we've just looked at the pooled t test where the variances are assumed to be equal. And uh, what happens? If the variances are not assumed to be equal, if the population variances are not assumed to be equal. Just one second. So if the variances are not, if the population variances are not assumed to be equal, then we perform what we are calling the non pooled t test. The non pooled t test. And remember that for this one, uh, we have what we call the, the degrees of freedom are delta, given by delta. Uh, so for the non-pooled t-test, our test, uh, if the variances are, if the population variances are not assumed to be equal, uh, remember, of course, first and foremost, we need to divide standard deviation, the larger standard deviation, divided by the smaller standard deviation. If we find that that ratio is greater than two, then we know that uh, we can assume that the population variances are not equal. So, and if the population variances are not equal, then we perform what we call the non-pooled t-test. And our t statistic is given by x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus x bar 2 over square root of S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2 because now the variances are different and uh, when we were looking at confidence interval, we said that this is t distributed with delta degrees of freedom. And I had said that usually the formula for delta, I give it in the exam. Okay, somebody's asking a question. Hey. Uh, so he's asking what happens if alpha were to be 0 0.015? Okay, uh, if you look at the tables that I gave you, those tables are for specific values of alpha. I'm not saying that uh, we cannot have some values of 0 0.015, but uh, we restrict ourselves to the values which are in the table. So, um, like uh, 
when you when you do confidence interval and uh, uh, hypo hypothesis testing, most of the time statisticians just use 90%, 95%, and 99%. Most of the time, we usually use only those three values. Okay, so I had said that where T has delta degrees of freedom, and I had said that uh, I usually give the formula for delta degrees of freedom. And remember that the delta degrees of freedom should be rounded down. Now, let's look at an example. We see how we can perform non-pooled t-test. Non-pooled t-test. Okay. The example, several neurosurgeons, several neurosurgeons, wanted to determine wanted to determine whether a dy dynamic system whether a dynamic system reduced the operative time reduced the operative time relative to a static system relative to a static system as shown as shown in minutes as shown in minutes in data set 11 in data set 11 i will repeat that several neurosurgeons wanted to determine whether a dynamic system reduced the operative time relative to a static system as shown in minutes in data set 11 as shown in data set 11 so i also have my data set in data set 11 uh, what are the sample sizes? For the static system, there are only six. But for the dynamic system, how many are those? Three times. Uh, three times four is 12, 13, 14. Then there are 14. There are 14. So we have six and 14. So what is the question? What is the question? At the 1% significance level, at the 1% significance level check whether check whether the mean operative time the mean operative time is less is less with the dynamic system is less with the dynamic system than with the static system than with the static system so please uh, on your data sets dynamic is denoted as the first sample and static is denoted as the second sample so I'll just repeat the question again. At the 1% significance level, check whether the mean operative time is less with the dynamic system than with the static system. So the, the dynamic system is sample number one, and the static system is sample number two first and foremost we start with the null hypothesis the null and alternative hypothesis so h naught is such that mu one is equal to mu two equals mu two 
And the alternative is such that mu one, we go back to the question. The question is asking whether the mean operative time is less with the dynamic. I said that the dynamic is sample number one, so less with the dynamic than with the static. So the alternative is mu one is less than mu two. Okay, so now that uh, those are our null alternative hypothesis, we need to check for equality of population variances. We need to con co confirm S1 over S2 or S2 over S1. But for us to do that, we need to calculate them first. What is X bar 1? X bar 1 is 394.64. And once we know X bar 1, we can get S1. S1, which is the sample standard de deviation for the first sample. And this one is found to be 84.76. 84.76. What is uh, X bar 2? X bar 2 is 468.5. Point three three, and what is S two? S two is thirty eight point two two. So now we divide S one by S two because. 84 is greater than 38, so 84.76 divided by 38.22. This gives us 2.2. And 2.22 uh, is greater than 2. And so it implies that the population variances are not equal. And if the population variances are not equal, then we are supposed to use equation 1 for our computations. We are supposed to use equation 1 for our computations. Now, we already know X bar 1, we know X bar 2, we know S1 squared, we know S2 squared, and uh, N1 is uh, 14, the sample of size, the size of the first sample is 14, the size of the second sample is 6, so we just calculate our T observed, we calculate our T observed by substituting in equation one. And if we do that, we find that our T observed is uh, minus 2.68.68. That is our T observed. And then And then after getting that T observed, we need to get delta using the formula which I had given you the other time. 
And if we get delta and we round it down, it comes to 17. So you need to perform those calculations and confirm that delta should be 17. Now we need to get uh, T critical, T critical, and uh, remember that our test is a left tailed test. It is left tailed because mu1 is less than mu2. So if we have our t distribution here, then the test is only left tailed. So it means that the small, because the level of significance is 1%, then the small area on the left is 0 0.01. Uh, so we need to know T critical. And this T critical is T uh, this uh, yes, we need to get this T critical. And uh, remember, uh, how did we say that we usually read the T tables? When I was teaching you how to read T alpha, we said that alpha is the area to the right. That is, if it was like this, then if uh, we had T alpha here, then the area to the right is the one which is alpha. So we need this T, T critical value such that the area to the left is 0 0.01. But remember that the T distribution is uh, symmetrical. So there must be another T value which is such that there is an area of 0 0.01 to the right. The T that I'm writing in red, it is T 0 0.01. That 0 0.01 represents the area to the right. Now, if I get, and remember, how many degrees of freedom are we looking at? 17 degrees of freedom. So it means that if I go to the tables and I get what that value is, what that value is equal to, then uh, the, the one we need to answer our question is going to have the same value, but it will be negative of that value. So now we can go to our tables and we look for T0.01 with 17 degrees of freedom. But the one that we need to answer our question should be the negative of, of what we find in the tables. So let me open my table. Was it already open anyway? I share my screen. Uh, so we are looking for T, T zero point zero one with seventeen degrees of freedom. I can see 17 degrees of freedom. We need T0.01. Yes. 
So moving from the left at 17, we see 1.3, then 1.7, then 2.1, then 2.567. Above 2.567, we have T0.01. So the value we are looking for is zero, sorry, is 2.567. is 2.567. So to answer our question, what we need, our, our T critical is equal to minus 2 point five six seven and so we need to uh, compare t observed we compare that with t critical t observed is minus two point six eight what about two critical minus two point five six seven Obviously, T observed falls in the rejection region because minus 2.68 is much less than minus 2.567. So T observed falls in the rejection region. So we should reject H0. We should reject H0. That is the test results are st statistically significant at 1%. And so what is our conclusion? Uh, we are rejecting H0. So what is our conclusion? Our conclusion is that the mean operative time is less with the dynamic system. We are rejecting H0. So our conclusion is the mean operative time is less with the dynamic system than with the static system. Uh, so that is how uh, we perform an unpooled t-test. That is how we perform an unpooled t-test. So I want you to look for the p-value. I want you to look for the p-value, of course, and then I want you to confirm that the p-value is less than 0 0.01. So I've given you the answer for that. Look for the p-value and confirm that it is actually less than, uh, that it is actually less than 0 0.01. Zero one. Queries.